Hey everyone, welcome to Artwork by Dutch. This is the ADHD artist. And let me share my screen here. Hope everybody's having a good Friday. So I'm going to be doing a flat, reflatting a piece, kind of. This sometimes happens in comics where um, the editor gets the page and they look at it and they say, no, this should be this Batman or this Robin. And they have the uh, artist redraw the new character, new pose, whatever. And then they send back, because it's only one panel or maybe it's two because they're adding the Robin in another section. And they'll send back the flats to be recolored with the new uh, image. Maybe they change the scenery. So... Um, and when I originally did this, I did it uh, over uh, pencils. I set the line art to a, another line art, created the control J and created the duplicate of the line art and put that to multiply, which darkened it and allowed me to go through and quickly um, color it. And I knew it would be off and everything a little bit, but the techniques to darkening it and everything like that. Uh, but they wanted to have uh, Shelby ink it instead. And so it came through and I just had to readjust some things on Shelby's original art um, that he sent over. He set it for prints. You have a little bleed, uh, 0.25 on top and on bottom, on sides, excuse me, top, bottom and sides. And <clears throat> also the DPI. Um, was a little less than what I originally had that. So I changed those things and um, it was very important to change the DPI in that as well as the size. Hi, Bubble Mode. Thank you. I didn't do it. Um, this is uh, Tommy Donahue and did a fantastic job. I don't know if you saw the Jimmy Reyes, but he was uh, sketching this uh, while Jimmy was inking another piece for the CG vacation. I think that ended the day. But um, yeah, so I, I just got the flats or the links from Shelby and it I lined it up as best as I could with this tree and the girl as well as Pitt. Um, the rest is just basically just cut and paste. So that's all I'm gonna be doing here. I, I mean, can't cut and paste, sorry, uh, because I can't move it around, but I'm basically going to um, just reflat real quick and I'll show you how that's done. It's not that hard. I've done this so many times. Um, other comics that it is pretty quick. And I'm glad too, because a lot of this part was a little hard to get uh, done. It was not clear. So we shall be clearing it up a bit. I can just come in now with great big swaths of my lasso. And to start to add things in. Oops. Yeah, this is a great piece. This is fantastic. I get to see stuff like this every day, which is just a joy. I'm also an illustrator myself, so it's inspiring. Keeps me motivated. In fact, I've got to, originally I didn't think I was going to get this. Uh, I thought Shelby was just going to like not do it. Uh, Phil was going to have him do it, I should say. And that happened. I'll be working on my stuff later when I'm done here. Try to get this campaign set up for the second issue of the Wayfarer. And then I'm going to immediately do a third. I'm probably going to have to talk to Shelby and a couple others if I should do an Indiegogo for my first campaign. It was a popular campaign, fully funded on Kickstarter. Uh, but I know a lot of people are not fans of Kickstarter. So I need to get uh, some others. You know, how long to keep the campaign going. So 
So all I'm doing is, again, uh, like I said with tutorial, so I'm holding down shift once my pen touches the Cintiq. I then hit hold option. This is all on max. I believe it's control and alt or alt and shift, excuse me. And once I do that, I'm able to come in and make multiple selections. And that's, again, what key for me, if anything, is that little tidbit right there. Is all one color? Yep. So you may see me just tracing out with my lasso the leaves here, but there's other ones that are sticking out that aren't um, actual leaves, like they're on her skin. Well, I'm just going to go back over and just quickly remove those. I just want to come in here and make this big, huge selection. If I cut this out, actually. Paste. So go ahead, if you're on, hit the like, the stream, as well as subscribe, get notified. Plan on doing some traditional artwork, some things I don't typically do a lot of, uh, sketch covers. Let's pick up some great spawn ones from my local comic book shop. I really want to work on those. And if you need a flatter, you know, hit me up. I am available. I typically work 24 seven. Normally. <laughs> I'm just going through and I'm Correcting this because I don't want to reflat the entire thing over again. It just doesn't make sense um, to do so. Will it take me the same amount of time? Probably not. Probably went through this pretty quickly. Karen, keep maybe no less than an hour. That helps my ADHD brain get to thinking of something else before I fall asleep by accident or something. It's kind of like working a Rubik's Cube now I think about it. I've been watching a lot of Rubik's Cube. How to solve. Modern Rogue just had one on. Couldn't pay attention to that, though, while it's flatting, so I'm going to watch it again. And I want a Rubik's Cube again. I think when I solved my Rubik's Cube, I actually grabbed a ball-peen hammer and smashed the hell out of it. I think that's how I did, and I just put it back together. That's how I solved it. I like the pursuit of happiness guy. I pulled the good old Homer Simpson. We go smash now.
here. I swear I did this, but I still have to send something to Wacom. I, I did do this section. It didn't take. Damn it. Where my mouse and lasso are not, or any of my express keys aren't switching as they should. That's caused me some major upset headaches. I'm trying to get some pieces together for Tucson Comic Con coming up. Uh oh, that was not good. My bad. Selection there. To get restream set back up on my computer so I can see chats from other sites. Probably one of my cousins is up. This is a baby girl, so it might be night. So for uh, ADHD people, you know, they tell you to body double. Sometimes too, just doing this, the stream just being on makes me have to concentrate work. This is my body doubling because I don't know if anybody's on watching or not. My head's down looking at this, so let's focus on what I'm doing, the task at hand. I missed on her. Real quick. Oops. Who knows? I might actually just be spitting in the wind with this piece. Uh, They might have already taken the simple version of original flats that I did and I rendered it. Which if it did, that's not an issue. was you know already rendered and that's okay if, uh, it's still a good lesson on how to uh, correct a flat 
that you may get back from the publisher. It happens more often than you think. Okay, I didn't do that nail there because I wanted that to go there. That's a clever pinky. I've done a few Destro pages where I had to redo the entire thing because they added characters, uh, some she. Oops, screwed up in the one. Not want to draw. We can do this lightning fast. Try to explain. Making multiple selections by holding down the shift and option. Uh, sitting in the wrong thing. I just was noticing that that color was not changing. The majority of this piece is already complete. Just going through and catching the areas up here. Down here. Where I need to get I mean, a lot of things, again, is just repeat. It becomes muscle memory after a while. Um, when you're doing this. And again, it's just technique, too. This is something developed over seven years of doing this. I'm the kind of guy that uh, if I'm, I'm a planner, so I running 20 different scenarios in my head. Not unlike uh, Dr. Strange trying to figure out Thanos. I don't still understand how that was the only one solution, but since his other alternate versions figured out a different version, Just like I said, running through my head, seeing everything popping out, it needs to be changed.
So I don't know if you can see on the screen, the plus symbol appears. And that is adding. And then by again holding down the shift, I'm turning it from a free form lasso to magnetic. And again, this is a time saver because I have done many scenes of Metropolis or Gotham or New York City. And you've got, I have done entire buildings, uh, landscapes, where the windows are, you know, visible. You can definitely see it's a window. And they're thick enough, so you have to color it in color. You can't just leave them as is. And that is a tough thing to do one at a time. You're going to be there for eight hours a day. And I'll be honest with you, as a flatter, you're not getting paid a lot. Um, no, it is... Uh, You got competition from overseas. Um, there's some great ones in the Philippines that do some great work. There's some others that don't, but you still, you know, they're doing it for four bucks because that's their local currency. You may think that's a great deal, but in the U.S., that's, that's not untypical or not. It's not. It's very typical. Excuse me. Um, to see something like that happen. You, you get it in animation a lot where they're not paid for doing what I'm doing right now uh, a heck of a lot. But without them, you know, there's no show, really. You have a show, you have a, actors and whatever, but they do all the heavy lifting. So... When, I like working with a lot of professional artists as well because again I get my professional rate and I demand my professional rate. I ask, you never don't be afraid to ask, you know. You know what your worth is, what your time is worth. Um so definitely you know ask. And then put the work in. That way you're invaluable to that person, especially a professional artist. They might be like, well, you know, this guy's doing exactly what I want. Why would... he's... Maybe he's faster than what I hired before, or he keeps his mouth, oops, mouth shut. Doesn't that show things up on his uh, Facebook page before it's even been announced? Hey, Jimmy, how are you doing? All right, so here's that sick, sweet piece that Tommy was working on. And Shelby Robertson's did the inks. I originally had, um, where is it? I originally inked it or colored it, excuse me. You're seeing a lot of my work that I just did done for people. And this is the one I did, but I did it over uh, the pencils. So I created a multiply layer. Unfortunately, a lot of the artwork lines from the paper came through. I, I darkened it, though. I added a, the second layer here with multiply. Uh, so that way I could get those lines in. I can see what was going on and try to hit it. So all I'm doing is I just, uh, after I work the image, uh, the canvas size and the DPI, I just copy pasted that flat from there and pasted it in this one. And basically tried to line it up as much as possible. So I picked the point that I, I wasn't 
going to uh, spend, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on, which was the girl and the tree over here in the right. So I just lined those as much as possible, working the kid on the side with the trees. It's not an issue and pit. This pretty much is just rocks and everything else. So it's not gonna take me that long to fix. Now for coloring, I don't, I mean, I color my own work. Um, and again, I do, how I learned is uh, from Brian Miller from up Hi-Fi, uh, who I work for on top of all the other uh, industry artists out there. Um, and so I did the Hi-Fi method. I do the Hi-Fi method, but I, I'm, starting to go branch out and learn a mix of different styles. I'm really hoping uh, now that Adam Hughes is um, doing stuff, because uh, I, I, my style is very much like his, uh, and I love his coloring as well. So it's kind of emulating that. Shelby talks about it a lot. Uh, I like Terry Dodson, how he colors. Um, and I do a mix of different different styles, um, a lot of overpainting after the end. You know, this is only a half hour, but mm, half the page already done. So what I did here is I just made a selection around the tree, um, cut into the water, grab my paint bucket, and now I'm gonna just tap on the green leaf and it's gonna drop in my color, not drop in the blue. Didn't realize that was there until a second ago. And that actually I picked up from um, Color by Kurt. That also helped uh, expedite my coloring process, my flatting. Seeing little areas I may have missed. Let's zoom back out. I mean, I could go through right now <clears throat> and just wipe this all out in white or in the blue, but it means that I have to go in and paint all those individual leaves. It's gonna take a hell of a lot of time. So what I'm gonna do now is just cut out and cut and paste in, or not paste in, but um, color in my paint bucket. These areas here. This is kind of like you see when you, watch a lot of digital painters. They'll you know paint in the area of, or the, the figure in one color and then uh, they'll <clears throat> then go in and start to paint it down or do the individual pieces. But what they do typically is uh, grab a brush and they just start painting in with a brush or a pen. Again, all I'm using is my same technique. This is basically rinse and repeat. I'm able to flat this piece. You know, it's going on a half hour, you know, half the image is done. Yeah, Shelby was a little worried that, um, or concerned that this would take me a long time to do. I'm like, yeah, you know, I've done it before. Just 
see if this last bit of leaf frond or stem it's actually what it is and that quickly uh, my fill button on my express key on my Cintiq and my save button are right next to each other so I was hitting the fill ended up hitting the save which is good if they always remember to save there's been times where and i'm sure you many people have experienced this where your machine just restarts right in the middle that happened to me just not too long ago and luckily i was able to recover because i had just finished the entire page and it was a huge huge spread um took me four hours to do because I was breaking it up. It had like 16 panels. Hey, thanks again, Jimmy, for stopping by. Have a good night. Yeah, this is a, it's awesome. It's always awesome working on Shelby stuff and I'm hoping one day maybe yours. So pick me up. I see now with uh, what Shelby did there, I can start seeing like maybe this is water right here. So I'm going to see. just cut around the pit's arm. Oops. There's floor arm there. And let's fill this in. Now I see some water I'm going to add in here. So yeah, Shelby's inks really helped clear it up and is giving me more to do with the image than previously. Eventually, I get around to actually drawing my own stuff again here, real quick. Oh. Do more of the Wayfair. I really want to show the latest um, character I just added. To so my third issue. It's pretty badass. I'm actually See how this originally was, there was uh, the drawing, it was originally all his hair. So Shelby actually helped kind of thin that down. thing I 
Um, seeing this is actually all tree. Oops. Happy my kids are home. So not a lot of late night streaming anymore or late night working until they're gone again. Pitt's teeth over. I feel like a dental hygienist. Going through and quickly checking this gum line. I'm hoping I'll get another Facebook notification. Very strange, after I did my stream last night, got a notification from Facebook that the music uh, for the StreamYard intro was uh, copywritten or the owner thought it was my his work. I'm like, nope, that stream, because then they automatically put his name on it. I'm like, dude, it's not him. This is owned by this company here. And if obviously it didn't hit anybody else, um, you have to do a submit a dispute. Like it's not copywritten. He's not, uh, he doesn't own my characters because eventually I showed my characters on, on there. Um, yeah, you my character Amya in the background. Like, he doesn't own that, that's mine. And um, doesn't own uh, the other characters that we're working, uh, people I got permission to use and get credit for all the right music. So it's like, this guy's on crack. Just fiddling around with too many things. I stay on task here. I'm going to cut around. Just cut all this out. Now I can see what I'm doing. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. I know I pasted in that red, and didn't take. So I get this issue with Wacom fixed soon. It's really frustrating. 
that I'm gonna have to upgrade my computer OS to the current Monterey or whatever it's called. Yeah, look at these sick lines, man. This is I've seen Shelby Inc. Uh, on a stream in person. Oh. I don't quite like doing this in my own artwork, but I love watching other artists do it. I'm just still trying to figure out how to experiment with it and put it into my my pieces. You know, the muscle or the whiteout and these veins and stuff, that is definitely something you could see working it in. And then I also experiment too, you know. With pieces all the time. Do you wish the last was a bit more precise? All right, just trying to decide now what's what here. I will right, we'll do the main bark, the tree or branch, or trunk. That's the trunk of the tree. I'm gonna keep going and then hit my flat button and or fill. It's gonna fill it all in at once. Actually, I'm not. I'm gonna hit the Bucket tool. I'm just gonna come up. Tap, tap, tap. So you can't use your, cannot use delete with this because if you do, you're just gonna delete the background. You've got your transparent layer, so that's why we don't do that. <clears throat> Um, you can't use the magic wand to select and then invert because there's a lot of areas here that are open. And even though the AI is getting better and the tool for recognizing what is what, I uh, still, it still wouldn't work. And sometimes, too, uh, there are artifacts because the scan of the page wasn't great. You'll pick up those artifacts, and trust me, I've had pages like that, and it just doesn't look right.
So I noticed in the brown from the tree had that section. So what I did is I just selected that area that I thought might have had some brown in case I missed it. Those the blue is the background color and then hit the tree with my paint bucket. And that allowed me to you know, put those areas in just in case I screwed up. All right. I think that might be a different tree color, but just in case. Oh, different tree color. Done. Just the hippo, the water, this area here. I've never really had a one where it totally is off like this, but um, I'm kind of done because you know usually it's it's going to print. And uh, just need those pages corrected. Hmm. There's the green one in there. Fun things to do this weekend with my kids. Well, one of them. Max of both, but one's a teenager. Off to college. And dads, we got it tough. Especially if you're the disciplinarian type, which is, you know, meaning do your timeouts and everything. And if it doesn't work, then I'm in the corner. working this tree in his line again. I should pick another music channel.
inspected and we're done. I want ice cream. It is humid in Phoenix. Now, it's not like uh, Florida humid or Minnesota humid where you're you know, basically swimming through the air. And I like it hot. All right. My house is set to 85 when nobody's home. 82 when it's occupied. So that's how I like my temperature. So it's a terrarium in here. I'm a Vulcan. No. And now that I've added all the heat film to my windows, uh, probably a vampire I have to be next. I am the vampartist, by the way, the ADHD vampartist. Um, But I had to turn the AC on. I only turned it to 82 just to bring down the humidity a bit. But uh, yeah, I was hot. You know. Could not believe. It sounds like some other Star Trek. We need the storms. I'm sorry, and I, you know, feel sad for those people who um, climate change are fortunately in areas where there's a lot of flooding, scarring, forest fires. So they haven't recovered from the last years or the years before. So they got a foot of water in their home. Yeah, we need the rain. Zooming in, just something going on here. Picking up some colors. Excuse me. I was going to fill it in, but I realized that that X, I needed that color. I'll just come back through, select, bucket, got the blue here. I'm just going to cut all this out. There's a means of doing that where you can hit my your negative wand and deselect those areas, but I 
in Photoshop, there is multiple ways to do things. Except to get them to work <laughs> with your driver manufacturer. So we're now down to the last bit here. Oops. I didn't touch any of those areas. Well, it's been an hour. So I've, I am not a uh, walking, talking, chewing gum kind of guy. I mean, I could probably figured out but give instruction. Uh, last year I was trying to teach um, some under, uh, underage kids how to draw and everything. And it's kind of hard to be it was instructional on how to, you know, help for later classes and stuff, but it was hard to sit there and learn it. talk, turn around, try to help them out, and then also help others as well, completing the lesson. So hats off to teachers that are able to do that day to day. They all aren't being paid enough. And it's not that teachers aren't good. It's just that it's not getting paid enough to retain your services, that's all. Any teacher out there that can do that, hats off to you. Especially multiple kids. I'll pull back here so we can see the progress of this page. I'm pretty much close to being done. I should have actually made a copy of this layer to show a uh, before and after. I mean, all I have left, what I'm trying to do now is I'm just taking this upper quadrant. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that uh, as a, my thought is down below here, we've got all this water, water droplets. So it's gonna take some time just to go through, find all those. Whereas up here, everything's already selected. I'm just um, you know, correcting the flat now that I've got the inks on it. And by doing so, it's just making it a little easier. Because <clears throat> I know I'm going to spend some time on on the water. I did before, so I'm going to end up doing it again. So what am I doing here? Um, I'm not certain if there's some brown in this area, so I'm just making a large selection, touching the brown of the tree. 
And that then should hopefully fill in everything as you see. Is it important? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, correct. I want to make sure everything's done right. So when the colorist or next renderer and our colorist along the line makes a selection, and if you was to isolate this on a separate layer, you'll see them what pops up. I'm sorry if you're on uh, Twitch and watching. I can't see or on Facebook any of the comments there. I have to get my restream up and running so I can see those again. I don't know if anybody's seen The Gray Man. Um, I've been watching a lot of the behind the scenes, the making of uh, on YouTube. And finally, somebody addressed to Ryan Gosling um, about uh, the, the part where Chris Evans talks about uh, the Ken doll. I can't say the rest of it because, you know, what we have with shootings and stuff, and just, the system might flag me. But um, I thought that was funny. Because he's playing Ken um, in the Barbie movie. <clears throat> Haircut, so that's another reason why it's probably really hot. I've got a lot of heat on my head. Tapping. Sorry if I'm talk not talking right there. I'm trying to just check things out. All right, so I see went to my Facebook. What's up, D Poppins? Poppin' Fresh is on. I just had to go and check and see on Facebook who's there. And Tammy, how you doing? Deep. Hey, Poppin' Fresh, when you're um, getting ready for that Kickstarter, man, let me know. I am definitely gonna back. I gotta. The studio is, uh, I'm almost done. I've been being Mr. Man as of late and get my studio ready. I am, it's almost, it's almost set. I just, tomorrow when I do some cleaning and rearranging, I need to have some framed work. So I will have to get that over to Steven at Hero and Villain. Then get it over to you. And of course, support your brother on uh, your work going forward. It's 
So this is a pit, uh, Shelby Robertson's inks over Tommy Patterson. It's very sweet. Hope everybody's doing well in Colorado, Tammy. For a while, if you guys are ever back in Phoenix. Got a place to stay if you need it. I'm sure it might make some other people uncomfortable, <laughs> but you guys are still family. You know, it'd be nice for the cousins to hang out and to. Plan trips so Sam can you know, meet her cousins. This is uh, the Sydney off to college. It's tough. It's my kids. And there's a whole swath of the family. Just They just don't know. Uh, once we moved to Phoenix, it was, this is an isolation. It's like an island. Um, most people come here. They go to the Grand Canyon and... Phoenix has to fly out. Yeah, me with my ADHD, this is just perfect. I mean, this just helps me work. Uh, again, folks, if you are also ADHD, um want to be an artist even if it's just a part-time hobby etc but you're just low self-esteem go see an nlp a neuro linguistics programming um therapist find out what's holding you back it's usually some childhood trauma now there's uh so i tell my my oldest my and my kid i should say both of them now there's a uh, person living rent free in your head get that taken care of because I'm not that person anymore but you know so you meet that uh, that person in your head that's been holding you back once you get that taken care of man sky's the limits nothing can stop you then and now you can give me a green lantern and I am going to do whatever. No. It really did help me a lot. I used to, and this may sound familiar to people, um, and I also, like anything else, you know, research the person. Don't just go and think that that person may be the one. Uh, I, I, the person I found, you know, he was like the devil, so he knew, like I said, there's only like a few people who know me inside and out. God, the devil, and then this guy. And... It was uncanny. Once I had it done, I actually, you know, my confidence level shot. I, I, I no longer um, give up on my artwork. Uh, I don't stop and come back six months later since having that done. And, you know, you have when you're talking to them, uh, I did mine through a Groupon. And you can sit there and do your initial assessment and ask questions, see how comfortable you feel around them, what the process is going to be. And then a little side note, uh, even though you're, 
did hypnotize in a sense. I mean, I never felt like I did. I was awake the entire damn time, but because uh, I don't remember what he was saying, it really helps with the future as well because you can just use the same techniques for other things. After seeing him, I pretty much had all the confidence in the world of what I could do. Um, and if I didn't know, I asked, which is something I didn't do before, learned. And then uh, made corrections as needed and then kept on learning. You know, that's the big thing too, is don't stop learning. Try to have different techniques. Um, you know, like I was, I always grew up on the Loomis method for drawing and I just never could figure it out. It always made me uncomfortable. I kept pressing it because I was like, oh, these people are doing it. So I got to do it too. And then I discovered the Riley method by accident on uh, Proco. And that one was easier to understand because uh, I could never figure out the cut a circle in half. It always looked lopsided to me. And the other good part, other thing then too, is that once you get rid of that self-esteem issue, yeah, I mean, I've got like everybody else, I've got uh, procrastination issues because of low dopamine. So it doesn't seem like I'm motivated to do something, but I, I am. I actually want to go and draw and I want to go do stuff. And so I will sit for days and not do anything and just maybe watch some anime, do something that may help me recover uh, the dopamine that I need play video games, do whatever it is. You know, um, I think the hard part too is with that, uh, especially if you're in a relationship is self care because you're doing self care to help you get back in the, to your groove. And the other person may not see that as self care. They just think you're just playing video games and being lazy. And that's, that's the tough part. Don't be think it's selfish if you're just having some self-care time. Um, I just had to learn that. The other part too is that um, you know if you are treated for ADHD and you're not on the meds or anything anymore, um, don't let the NLP person say that you may not be uh, uh, may not have ADHD because I thought that I thought I was just passing for the longest time. You know, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just like everybody else. And so I thought of it. Uh, but I have for myself, which is detrimental and is uh, the emotional dysregulation. So that's the tough part. So I will throw a Homer Simpson and get mad really quickly. There we go. That's all done. Let's grab this blue. Now I can focus on all these little water droplets. <laughs> that are everywhere. But yeah, I thought I was uh, like everybody else and it turns out I'm actually not. And uh, my form of ADHD, again, I'm much older than I look. I'm a time lord, so I... I'm 25 with 26 years experience, but I look 25. Don't dye my hair, so I'm not that vain. But it is funny. I, I remember when I met um, Keenan Lafferty at the, from the Can Kell show on YouTube, and we were hanging out because uh, I, I. It's a funny story. Uh, I was setting up, it was my 
think my second time or my first time at Phoenix, what was Comic Con at the time. And we're on the Hall of Heroes in the third floor. And I look up, my friend and I are, my, are setting up, and I see his artwork. And I'm like, okay, but I don't see him. And I was getting pissed because then I saw more of his pieces going up. I'm like, hey, that's that's person is stealing. That's they're stealing his work. And I got I got mad. I'm like, nobody steals, you know, from him. He good kid. I like his stuff. I learned a lot of things from him. This, you know, sketch lifting thing was one. I ran over there. I told my friend, you know, keep setting up. Um, you know, show's about to start. I gotta go and you know tell the people to take that down, or I'm gonna report them to the con and have them removed. And I come storming over there. I was like angry. I was like, man, we get these guys kicked out of here. We can't do this. And as soon as I got to the table, um, he stood up from underneath the table because <laughs> he was helping his girlfriend at the time uh, setting up. And I just like, holy shit! <clears throat> Pardon my French. You know, you're Keen, you're Keen Lafferty. And he's like, hey. And I was like fangirl. And I was like, you know, I couldn't say anything. I was speechless. And it was the funniest thing ever. It was like, you know, I'm a big fan. Eventually when it did come out of my mouth. And I explained the story to him. That was hilarious. And I, then I was embarrassed. Was like, oh, man, I just made a fool out of myself. So I walked away back to my table. And then told my neighbor or told my, my neighbor. Uh, a friend helped me the, the story of who he was and all of a sudden he came walking back over the table and was like hey you're a big fan you know i'm like yeah i am and it's like yeah you know my girlfriend told me you know, come over and i'm gonna hang some stuff and then she handed me a bunch of you know freebies and things and the entire con we we're just sitting out hanging hanging out together all of us and you know went out to dinner and so we were sitting there talking and he's like Trying to say, you know, about the con, the con scenes, etc. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, I really we should pay. And he's like, no, I invited you out to dinner. We should pay. I said, no, I, you know, you're a young kid. I got, I got money. Let me take you out for dinner. He's like, young kid. You know, I'm 20. I think he was 29 at the time. And I told him, I said, I'm basically, you know, 25 with, or at the time I was 17 with uh, X many years experience. He's like, and he didn't add, do the ad. And he's like, I'm much older than you are. I said, you need to add, add it up. He's like, holy cow, you're, wait. He's like, you're, who does your skin regimen? He started asking because he's like uh, impressed that how uh, tight my skin is, et cetera. You know, I'm not like an old man. So I thought that was funny. Oops, messed up on that. That was my Keenan Lafferty story. That was a good one. I kind of miss not seen him on YouTube must be a busy busy man so now we're just going through and flatting here I see pit I have to correct his hand here should have done that earlier when I was doing that on his forearm. That helps because then I can see what's left to do here. Obviously, I screwed up on The gum line here of the hippo's mouth. Uh, is it all one color? 
Okay, this is. This did that because I want to see where I may have missed. Um, here. Okay, this is a little different color. What color is this? That's pit skin. So. Come through and isolate all that. Make sure I go around the thumb. This area here. The reason why I'm doing that is because, again, this color of his skin and the pink is about the same. Means I probably should be darkening this. So that way it pops out. I can see where I'm missing. Last thing I'm going to do before I tackle the water and then be done with this is I'm going to do her toenails. Since she's designated them as a little darker, do the darker nail polish. I don't know if a lot of other colorists do that. I know it's a hi fi mandate. Accentuate the beauty of the woman, female form. Uh, another good thing with flatting is, like I said, it helps my it helps me build up endurance. That's what I should be saying. Also build up endurance. Um, so here's a trick. Negative, grab the wand, pull down option, negative wand, tap in that area, and it should. Uh oh, did I do it wrong? No. Oh, it should. Oh, I'm still in lasso. See, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, with Wacom. It will then remove the skin color and go to the uh, color there. Next color, it's bordering. Also, time saver trick. Yeah, so it helps you with your endurance because uh, um, I'm sitting here. Basically drawing over his work or his inks, and it's uh, helped me build up my endurance. Oh, that's why. When I'm drawing my own stuff, it just feels, I don't get tired as often as I used to. I 
I'm doing a lot of repetition of, you know, drawing circles, ovals. I'm seeing some areas here that I'm zoomed in that I missed. I'll show you that trick again. So the wand, hold on, option on a Mac. I think it might be Alt. Click in the area you want to remove. And once it does, then you can paste. And there's these little areas that um, were still selected. So I'm just going over quickly and dropping in some color. You saw me change that. Now I can redo it again. Here I need to change up, just grab the blue. When you've got clean artwork like this, um, and I know how Shelby scans it in and then makes adjustments in Photoshop before he sends it to me, it really helps get rid of the grit of the paper, any um, Pencil smudge or ink smudging from his hand. Last bit here. I don't think there's much more I need to do. I mean, I could go now that I'm looking at this and say, uh, well, the splashes and the water droplets, I could change that to a, a lighter blue. Um, but you could paint that away or color that away when you're doing the rendering stage next. So lightening that those areas with uh, the wash. I don't know who the next uh, colorist is in this after me after doing the flats. Um, some artists will or colorists will ask you to do that, to break it down even further before you begin your flats because they want that. Last minute corrections here. Checking to see if there's anything. I'm going to change these claws to this a little darker. Oops. That was too dark. I was making the wrong selection. I'm thinking this actually is probably all water. As well as up here now I'm seeing some stuff. So Shelby Zinks really helped bring out these uh, areas I may have missed on the initial sketch. In fact, I'm going to blood red, but I'm going to grab in here and color in 
the scratch marks. We correct the nails. All right, I think that is it. Oh, seeing this last section here. Um, there are different colors. I'm gonna pick the, the wand, paint those in. Done. Just checking to see if there's any other areas. There's some water over there. Where did I see the drop? That could be hair. Uh, if it's gums, I might. It could be a little jaundicey, but uh, let's darken those up a bit. Darken that a different color. So now it's not going to clash with the skin. And I didn't see a nipple there the first time. So got to color the nipples. You know, yes, Fokker, you can milk uh, somebody who's got teats. So I, a oh, little debris there coming off the back of the rhino, or hippo, excuse me. So that's going to capture that. That's it. There is a mist. Make that correction real quick. And I think we'll be done. Hoping I'll have a new intro to my videos soon for the website. My youngest daughter to work on that, and then try to do some animation and clip. That's my main character, Amia from the Wayfarer. Folks, I think that is it. And I spoke too soon. Small. It's not like it's going to take me 10 hours to do. I'm going to make a huge selection here. A little way of it on the other side.
about dancing a long time. I wish COVID would just go away. Monkeypox too. And I think I should be okay with the monkeypox one since they say those who have gotten their smallpox vaccine should be cool. Not have a problem. Be me. Okay, I'm going to assume that maybe that might be a mountain range. Turn a purple. Might be saturated. Drop that in there. And that. Oh. I remember I did her sunglasses a different color. See, I didn't get those done right. Oh, I thought that was uh, implied here. Ooh, I guess that was wrong. That sent off. Let's make sure I've got all my colors selected. See if there's any areas I may have missed. Like I missed all the way over here. is done. Just turning off the layer. I'm seeing the bigger chunks here. A lot of this is going to be hidden by um, the black lines. 
Let's make it look nice. Yeah, look at that. Nice. That's the cool bit about this I like as well, is it looks like uh, an 8-bit video game. All right. So, done. We'll save. Not bad. I think actually last night it took me about three hours to, or the night before, about three to four hours to do. Because uh, I broke it up into smaller chunks, uh, I wanted to tackle the uh, the leaves because those are usually the enemy of any flatter. Uh, grass is another one; spiky grass is really tough to flat. Um, and yeah, now I see there's one more piece I missed up here. <laughs> Once I zoomed out, I saw it. This is all this. Let's bring it back over here. Flat, come back. Little areas. color and now we're done now we're finally finally complete uh yeah i'm gonna keep that as is i thought this section here was not covered by grass but or by the branches leaves but i see that it is so i'm going to keep it as is if not i would have if this was not here this part here I would have selected that color and filled it in. It's also possible too, this might all just be tree as well. I'll fill it in. Yeah. So there we go. All right, folks. Well, I appreciate everybody being on. Stopping by, I appreciate uh, Jimmy Reyes popping fresh. Bubble for being on the beginning, and Tammy as well. Thank you guys for sitting with me this evening. Can't believe it's Friday. But uh, yeah, it's Miller time now. So you guys take care. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. Probably won't be streaming this weekend, but um, maybe next week. I might do some actual Wayfarer um, thumbnailing and or using the Clip Studio 3D models, dropping in uh, the models into place where I think I want the characters to be and um, going from there. So that might be something to do to see that process. So again, thanks again. Have a good night. Take care. And uh, remember to like, subscribe, the ADHD artist here, and have a good night.